how to easily edit a looping animation in Unreal Engine. We are going to use Control Rig in Unreal Engine 5 to edit looping character animations. Before we dive in, if you find this video useful, don't forget to hit the like, hit the subscribe, and hit the bell. A looping character animation is simply an animation that plays on repeat. Video game characters have numerous looping animations, such as the idle animation, the walking animation, the running animation, the jumping animation, to name just a few animations. I said animation a bunch there, did you hear that? These animations are mapped to the character's skeletal mesh. I'm going to show you how to use Control Rig to make changes to these looping animations to save you time. If you want to learn how to make a custom control rig for your character in Unreal Engine, follow my previous tutorial on how to do that for characters that don't already have a control rig, such as the zombie character I bought from the Unreal Engine marketplace for my recent short film. Click up here to see that now. Why would you want to edit a looping animation? For my short film, I needed to get a shot of the monster walking while dragging someone behind it with its hand. Instead of trying to animate the whole body of the creature, I figured the simplest way to achieve this would be to repurpose the walking animation I already had access to. So let's show you exactly how to do that so you can start doing it with your characters. I'm using Unreal Engine 5.2, but this process should be similar, if not identical, to the version of Unreal that you are using. Just make sure to enable the Control Rig plugin and add a character with a Control Rig to your project. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments. I'll get back to you. Damn! Look at that butt, by the way. Damn! That monster's got some booty cheeks. So, first thing you do, is open up your project, open up the content drawer, drag out your character's skeletal mesh into your project. Okay, and then go up and add level sequence. Then name your new level sequence. I name it something like test level sequence, and then put it in the folder you want it to go in. I have a folder for my sequences. And then click save. And if you're wondering, yes, I am shooting this video on an anamorphic lens, because I'm crazy. Now I'm going to select my skeletal mesh. And I'm going to open the sequence I just created. Now let's expand the sequence and click track actor to sequencer. And because I've already selected him, he is automatically there. So I select add zombie boom now the zombie skeletal mesh is on the sequencer timeline now on animation i click the plus and i scroll down the, through the animations that came with this zombie a whole bunch of looping animations and i go to the walking animation boom and by default it's only a couple seconds long and it does not fill my entire sequencer timeline so I'm going to extend it and it's automatically just going to keep looping as long as I extend it. Strictly speaking, you don't actually need to extend the timeline. You can work with the length the repeating animation is by default. I wanted it to be longer because I wanted to add more nuance. Now it covers my entire sequencer timeline. Let's press pray. Let's press <laughs> Let's press <laughs> let's press play get it together man so there we go that is the walking animation that the creator of this asset made perfect i just need to make a few tweaks so now i'm going to click the skeletal mesh name on the sequencer uh control click right click and then bake to control rig and I'm gonna select the control rig that I created again if you want to learn how to make a control rig watch my video it the link is in the description there's a new track on the sequencer for the control rig and we can see the controls now let's expand control rig and now there is a track for every single controllable bone 
and you'll see these triangles. <clears throat> these are keyframes for every single frame. Every single bone has a keyframe for every single frame. Hey, if you have a specific video topic request, leave it down in the comments. I want to know what you're working on. What are you using Unreal Engine to make? Is it a game, a movie, something else? Let me know in the comments. Let's make this more manageable. I'm going to click the control that I want to adjust. All right, so now let's click the control we want to adjust. And for me, that is spine 01. And by default, when I click it, it automatically highlights the corresponding track on the sequencer. Now, I'm going to click and drag and select every keyframe for that spine 01 control track. And I'm going to delete all of them. Then I'm going to bring the playhead to the beginning of the sequence. And I'm going to make my first change. I'm going to rotate that control around, kind of spinning the upper torso around. And I'm going to add a keyframe at the beginning, and I'm going to add a keyframe at the end, because I don't want that spine to move, to change. I just want him to be facing back the whole time. So now let's select the next control, which is spine 02. It's the next sp spinal control above that one. And again, I'm going to select all of the keyframes from that track and delete them. And making sure the playhead is at the beginning of the sequencer, I'm going to make my adjustments now. And boom, add another keyframe to the beginning and the end. Let's preview this and see by scrubbing through. Okay, it's working. Now I'm clicking the elbow and I'm going to adjust my view so I can get a bird's eye view of this situation. Now with the elbow selected, then I realized I hadn't deleted them yet, so now it's time to delete them. So now I move the playhead back to the beginning and I add the keyframe, move the playhead to the end, add the keyframe again. Keep in mind, this means his elbow does not move through the whole animation. Because his elbow is connected to his shoulder and his shoulder is connected to his torso and his torso is moving as he's walking, it actually looks pretty natural but let's add in a little bit more variance. I'm clicking his spine one, and then I'm moving to the center of the playhead, and I'm gonna make a quick rotational adjustment on that control and add a keyframe to the middle of the timeline. So now his back st straightens slightly in the middle and then hunches again at the end. Let's do something like that with the elbow. Let's add in some variations. We're gonna make a, some rotational adjustments to the elbow. And now there's a total of five keyframes for the elbow, so the arm kinda of moves a little bit. Nothing is too static. I like the way it looks. Now let's adjust his head. We want him, um, for the most part, to be looking straight ahead, even though he's got his arm back dragging the sheriff down the trail. So I've clicked the neck control, and now I've deleted all the keyframes. With the playhead at the beginning of the sequencer, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, get a better view on this. Let's rotate the neck so that it looks like he is looking forward. He's watching where he's going, so he's not going to trip over a log. You know, that would not be elegant. Monsters got to be on top of their game. So add the keyframe at the beginning, and then add the keyframe at the end, and then let's have him you know, head bob side to side a little bit. This track is getting a bit more varied than the others. It's got five keyframes. Now let's even add in a new detail. I want to have him look back at what he's dragging briefly. So let's have him turn back and add in a uh, keyframe. Let's see what it looks like. He looks back and then he looks forward again. Let's zoom out. And uh, let's collapse the control rig time uh, tracks so that the sequencer is more manageable. Let's drag the sequencer down so that we get a bigger view here. And there you go. That's all she wrote. He looks back, he looks forward. Hmm, he's freaky. That's it. That is how you edit a looping animation. Now let's... Um, Show, so now we're going to bake 
an animation sequence and so I'm going to add that to the animations folder of the zombie folder. Uh, name it whatever you want and press OK. Export animation and now you have an animation asset of your custom animation you just created. Save everything. Click save all. Make sure to do that frequently. Now let's go open up that animation folder and see our new animation asset and open it up and there it is. Now let's drag that animation asset out into the level to, to show you what that looks like and let's play the level. And so there it is, our looping animation that we just created. Sexy. All right, now let's show you how to apply this animation to a skeletal mesh. We've got our original zombie boy here in his T pose. Let's open up add level sequence, create a new level sequence, name it whatever you want. Okay, select our, you know, T pose zombie boy or your character in this case, and then click track actor to sequencer and then select the zombie, click animation, and it's gonna give you a list of the animation sequences and get the one that you just created. Boom, click it. Add, it's now got a track on your sequence and you can adjust how long it is. I'm gonna make this one longer at the beginning so it goes to the beginning of the playhead and let's press play and preview. Looking good. And I've barely done any work. I've just deleted the tracks I didn't want and made a few adjustments. And because I'm using a pre-made looping animation, it looks really good. Less than a year ago, I was dreaming about bringing my stories to life by using Unreal Engine to make short films based on my horror novel, Northport 1999. Just like some of you right now are probably dreaming of bringing your stories to life through video games or movies using Unreal Engine. And now I have my first animated short film streaming on Patreon right now. Within the first eight months of tinkering with Unreal Engine, my work attracted producer funding, helped me win a national endowment for the arts grant, and got me hired by another production company to do VFX work on their short film, which led to me being nominated for a VFX award. If I can do this in less than a year, so can you. I'm sharing what I learn along the way with you to help you tell your stories, whether that be through films or video games or something else. If you wanna see the short film that I made based on my novel, Northport 1999, and read the novel and support this project, then go check out the Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Bodhi the Movie Maker. You will get exclusive access to that short film, the book, and way more, including a 15% off discount on merch like this jacket. Thank you so much for watching. Hey, again, if you enjoyed this video, if you found it useful, please don't forget to hit the like, hit the subscribe, and hit the bell. All right, love ya, bye. Can we take a moment here to just appreciate the detail Oh my goodness, I'm gonna put the link to this monster asset in the description. Look at this level of detail, the wrinkles. <laughs> Look at that butt, by the way. Damn, that monster's got some booty cheeks.